What's up everybody? Today we are starting a new series on the Fluval Edge Reef Tank. And I've been wanting to do a video series about this tank for a while now because I've been wanting to start a reef in this thing forever. It's a little six gallon cube. If you don't know about it, it's just you can see from all angles on it and it just looks awesome in a house. And if you get a reef in it, it looks even better. And I've been looking and doing research and there are no videos showing how people are doing this. There are just a bunch of videos on, on the finished product and I want to see how people are doing it. So I'm going to start a video to hopefully help people out there who are interested in starting a reef in this tank. I'm going to be starting from basics, equipment, fish, coral, everything I'm doing with this, showing water changes, everything about this tank. And uh, hopefully you enjoy the series and you follow along. And it helps people out who want to start, so uh, let's get into it. Also, before you get started, there are a few items that you will need uh, before you start a reef. And so if you're brand new into the hobby, these are things you need to keep in mind before you start because you're going to need these you know, necessities. First thing is a refractometer or a hydrometer. Um, these measure your salinity. Uh, refractometers are like 20 bucks, so I'd recommend just go ahead and buy a refractometer. The hydrometers are cheaper, but the refractometer is a lot more accurate and they're way quicker to use, I think. Just take a little dropper, open this up, put, put a couple of drops on the uh, glass there, close it up, look into some light, and you'll see the, uh, the scale on there. I'll put a picture up here of uh, your salinity and basically for this tank I think you should keep it at uh, 1.025 is a, is a good good number it helps it gives you a little bit of wiggle room if water evaporates also another necessity is a test kit now this is a freshwater test kit but it does work for saltwater but if you're just doing saltwater go ahead and grab a saltwater test kit API makes their test kits um, they're not super professional, but they get the job done for what you need. You can get like Red Sea makes them. There's, you can get really pricey ones. This will do. You get pneumonia, nitrate, nitrite, all the whole, all of them pH. You get all of them. And then you will also need a siphon because you're going to be cleaning this water and gravel and all that uh, once a week. So it's going to be a lot of water changes because the tank is so small. Uh, you're going to need a siphon, just a little small one. Uh, the, the top of it is kind of small, so this one, this will do. It's just by Aquion. I'll leave a link in the description of the one that I got. And this is the one I've always been using for all my tanks. It works great. I'll leave a link. All these things are not too expensive. So, I mean, compared to how much you're going to pay if you get a bigger tank, this is going to be cheap for a reef tanks. It's just going to be a lot more maintenance. So keep that in mind that you're going to be doing water changes. You're going to need a lot of time for this thing if you want it to be successful. All right, so for equipment, I'll start with the heater. The heater, we went with the Hydor 50 watt submersible glass chrom heater. So the basically I went with the 50 watt because I didn't want anything too powerful and I didn't want anything too uh, low of power. and um, just I know I will leave the links for all the equipment here in the description below. I got it all from Amazon for a good deal. Um, it was, wasn't too bad, wasn't too expensive. Small tank, I uh, usually get cheap equipment. And so I went with that, <laughs> that heater. You can see it in the corner over here. It uh, fits nicely in there. And you can actually put it into the pump in the back, but you, you sacrifice the pump, obviously all the uh, equipment and the biofilter and all that in there. So. I went ahead and just put it inside, not a big deal. And for the power head, I went with the uh, Coralia Nano 240, which is their smallest in that line. And you know, I do not know how well this power head's going to do so far because I've not put any corals or fish or anything, but it looks like it is doing, doing okay, uh, circulating water and everything. But um, I won't know till we get stuff going in there. Um, a couple other equipment I went with, uh, I went with some, just the mag float. Uh, this is just like a little magnet algae cleaner. You can you can stick on the glass and slide it up and down and don't stick your hand in there. This is a basically, I think this is a necessity for this tank because 
on top here, you get um, some bubbles. Bubbles will form under the glass. Uh, there's some right there. It gets way worse when you do a water change. Just stick this in there and you can move all the bubbles out. And so it's, it's super handy. That's pretty much a go-to. I think it's like 10 bucks. So you might as well grab one. It's a good deal. Also, I went with just a little digital thermometer there, right back in there. I think it's reading uh, 78.2, which is, that's fine. That's a good temperature. Um, I basically, if I turn the knob up any more on this heater, it'll get to 79, a little too hot. And with the tank this small, you don't wanna put, um, get it too hot because the, if the water goes down or your house changes, your temperature is going to be fluctuating too much in a small tank, so it's better to have it on the lower end. It, depending on where you live, it gets hot here in California, so I keep it there. Um, right now, the basic lighting, this is just stock lighting. Stock filter, there's no filtration in there. This is just to kind of circulate water during the cycle. But I may add some pure gin or whatnot in there later on. And for the light, I do plan to get the um, ultra bright lighting, which is in aftermarket part, you can get them on eBay and they, they sell you the hood with LEDs in here that are way more powerful than the stock LEDs in here because before you, before you get this tank, you need to know you cannot use that stock lighting on any corals. So I mean, that's basically everything. The heater, the power head, and the uh, thermometer is all the necessities. Obviously, you're going to need a light. so. If you're thinking about purchasing a light, there are mods you can do, or you can buy a light that is um, pre-made, and that's what I'm gonna do just to be on the safe side, because uh, I don't have time, and it, it's just, it's hard to build those things. If you're into the DIY, you can do that. There's plenty of information online. But I'm gonna go with that one, and I'll, sh I'll do a review of that light as well once it comes in. I've not gotten it yet because there's no corals, there's no need for it yet. But as far as live rock and sand, I just want some live sand, you don't need live sand. I just got it because I do like the look of live sand. The live rock, I went with some Fiji live rock, cured live rock from my local fish store. There's a, there's a lot of live rock in here for the tank, so I'd recommend not putting that much in, but we want to do just for the looks. Also, when you're choosing live rock for this tank, make sure that before you go to your store, you measure out the hole opening for the tank. It's not very big, so you need to make sure that you get live rock that is small enough that you can get it into the tank and, um, or I mean, you could break pieces off, that's not a big deal. But if you like the look of a rock, make sure it fits. So what I did, I just took a piece of paper and I laid it over this hole, traced it out and then cut so that when I went to the store, I could make sure rocks fit into that hole into the tank. That's just a little tip for when you're picking out live rock or anything that you want to put into this tank. Just make sure it fits into this hole. And um, as you can see right in here, you can see some bacteria starting to grow. So that's good news. That means the cycle is nearing the end because we got the bacteria growing. Then after that, once it's all cleared up, we can start adding fish and corals and it'll be all fun. But um, I'll show you guys that process so far. I have not tested the water yet because there's not really a point yet because it's cycling and I know that the, the levels are just gonna be off the charts with ammonia and everything. I will be testing it soon though because um, I'm gonna do a water change here coming up and just to get the clean up all the ammonia and all that. So cycle's still going on, but I will keep you guys updated.